Hi there, the following video will show us the third method to solve quadratic equations and that is by what's called completing the square. Just to introduce this video, completing the square is an unbelievably powerful technique. Um, it's, it can describe to you a lot about the, the way the graph of the quadratic looks and various transformations of that graph in the xy plane. It also is where the quadratic formula actually comes from by completing the square. However, this particular video, I'm just going to focus on how to complete the square and only in a simple case where you've got just an x squared term, not something like 2x squared or anything like that. I'm just doing it based on the unit 2 syllabus, but I will, when I get the opportunity, put a video up explaining this wonderful technique in more detail with a slight more background to why it works. But for this video, I just need, we're going to show you how it works and how to do it. Completing the square. What it, gen what it means, if you've got a quadratic, of the form x squared plus bx plus c, for example, something like x squared plus 7x plus 3, where the number in front of the x squared is 1, the number b here is 7, and the number c is 3, they want you to put it in the form x plus a number, all squared, plus another number there. P and Q are to be determined, to be found. They could be positive or negative numbers. It's to put the X within a bracket and square it with another number and then some adjustment number at the end as well. Now, that may not make much sense. It's difficult to actually describe it sensibly without just showing a simple example. Here's a step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the square, how to get it right every time. Once we've done a few, it will be very easy for you. The first thing I will say is write your x in the brackets. That's how you want it in that form. You want x plus something in the brackets, and you want a squared. Whatever the sign is in front of the b, the sign in front of the 8 here is a plus. Put a plus in the brackets. Whatever the number b is, it's 8. Halve that number and put it also inside the brackets. Then in your head, square this number you've just put in the bracket, so do 4 squared, and subtract that answer in your head. Finally, add on the number term left in the original expression, and we are nearly there with the completed uh, the square form. Now, keep your x plus 4 squared here. Minus 16 plus 5 is actually minus 11. And that is the completed square form of the original expression. Where P, I found P to be 4 and I found Q to be negative 11. Now I've just shown you an algorithm or a method of showing how this works. Let's just double check it actually does work. If I worked out x plus 4 all squared, I would get x squared plus 8x plus 16. Subtract that 11 that's left over and I would have the x squared plus 8x plus 5 which is what I originally started with. So that form that I found is actually the form that the examiner, the complete the square is looking for and it equals our original expression. So hopefully you can see that that does equal that and hopefully you can learn these uh, the step-by-step -step process in order to find the complete the square version. Let's do another example. x squared minus 10x plus 5. We want it in the form x plus something all squared plus another number. Remember what I said. You want to put the x in brackets so that it's squared. Whatever the sign of the b is, you put it in the brackets. Whatever the number b is, it's 10 here, you half it and you write it inside. Then you work out this number, 5 squared and you subtract that answer, so 5 squared is 25, so you subtract 25, finally you add on your plus 5 that was left over here. Tidy up now, so you have x minus 5 squared 
minus 25 plus 5 is minus 20. That is your completed square form. Again, if I multiplied this out and collected like terms, I would get the original expression. Here, my P is minus 5, and my Q is minus 20. Let's do another one. Again, put your X in brackets and square. Whatever the sign of the B is, put that in your brackets. Whatever the B number is, half it, put it inside the brackets. Square that halved B, that 9 in your head, you get 81. Subtract the 81, and then whatever your number term here, here it was negative 5, tag that on the end. So you tidying it up, you have x minus 9 squared, minus 81 minus another 5 is minus 86. That is your completed the square form. So let's have a look at another example here. We're actually going to get fractions here, so I just want to show you this so we can be careful when we're doing these ones. Right, you want to put your x in brackets and square it. Whatever the sign is with the b, you put that in your brackets. You halve 5. So I think it's better to do this as simply writing fraction 5 over 2. Rather than doing a decimal 2.5, I think it's easier to do 5 over 2. Now you square 5 over 2 in your head and you subtract that away. 5 over 2 squared means 5 over 2 times 5 over 2, which is top times top is 25, bottom times bottom is 4, which is 25 over 4. So you subtract 25 over 4 and you take away 1. Let's try and tidy it up a little bit. So we've got x plus 5 over 2 all squared. Now, 25 over 4, minus 25 over 4, 1, well that can be written as minus like 4 over 4. So you've got minus 25 over 4, minus another 4 over 4, or minus 25 quarters, minus another 4 quarters, you end up with minus 29 quarters. That is your completed square form, where P in this case is 5 over 2, and Q is minus 29 over 4. Okay, I'd like you to have a go at the questions on the next slide. Pause the video, work through them, and then I'll show you the answers. The following exercise here just asks you to write the following in the completed the square form, stating your P and your Q. Pause the video, have a go at these questions. So I'm going to show you the answers now. On the next slide, they are unfortunately in decimal notation, which is uh, slightly uh, uh, annoying, but um, I'm sure you could translate that back to fractions. Always doing fractions when you're doing it. Here are the answers uh, below the particular questions. So double check your work with that, just checking your fraction match that particular decimal. Okay, I'm also going to put an exam question up for you. Please pause the video uh, when we've talked through it, have a go yourself, see what you can do, then I'll do the question for you. So, just before we start, you are given the identity x squared minus 12x plus 10 is equivalent to or is identical to x plus a all squared plus b. Find a and b. Really what that question is asking you in a dressed up sort of way is to complete the square of the left hand side and then state your a and your b. Pause the video, have a go yourself. So I'll show you how to get the answer here. You complete the square like I said, so x in brackets, put a square, whatever the sign is in front of the b, put it in your brackets, halve the number in the brackets, it's 6, sorry, halve the number in front of the x, the b, and you get 6, square 6 in your head, and you get 36, and subtract it away, and then add on whatever number you had left, so that's going to be add on 10. That simplifies to x minus 6 squared minus 26. 
your A is minus 6, your B is minus 26. An A star question here, very straightforward. As long as you translate this to mean complete the square, I suppose that's the hardest part of this question, just understanding what the question asks. Pause the video, have a go at this, very, very similar, just be careful what you write for your A and your B at the end. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answers in five seconds. Again then, this means basically complete the square of the left hand side, write your A and your B down that match. So, put your X in brackets with a square, the sign in front of the B is a minus, half the B, half the 10, you get 5, square the 5 in your head, 25, subtract that away, and add on your 18. Tidy it up then, so you have x minus 5, all square, minus 25 plus 18, turns out to be minus 7. What's your A and what's your B? Well, you're in the form x minus 5 squared, and you want it in x minus a squared. So a is simply 5, but be careful with your b here. You want your b in plus form, and therefore your b must equal minus 7 in this case.